Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome. Welcome all Rotarians and their guests. Uh, we are the Rotary Club of Gainesville. Today is March 29th. Um, this time at, uh, for guests and visiting Rotarians, if you are watching us on Zoom, please identify yourself in the chat. And if you're watching on YouTube, we ask that you please register your participation by sending an email to info at rotarygainesville.org. At this time, Pete Enwall is waiting. This, this, uh, this meeting marks the closest meeting we have to April Fool's Day, Friday. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be uh, Rodney Dangerfield again. You know, you've seen him before. So I don't get no respect. I just don't get no respect. I went on two diets. I didn't get enough food on the first one. I went to see my doctor. I put on rubber gloves the same time he did it. It was very confusing for him. Okay. My wife, I told my wife I wanted to be cremated. She made me an appointment for next Tuesday. All right, April Fool, we're, gonna, we're not gonna sing a song together today and uh, we're gonna try something different. If you, whatever you think about this, about not singing along, uh, please tell somebody so we won't ever do it again if you don't like it. So we'll give it a shot. Join me in pledging allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pete. That was just beautiful. Thank you so much. At this time, we are uh, very blessed and fortunate to have Eric Spivey give us our invocation. Um, Eric is going to be moving to Birmingham, and we are so blessed to have had him here for all the time that we have, and we wanted to have a special day today and have him give his invocation on his, unfortunately, his last Rotary meeting. So, Eric Spivey. Thank you. I have taken a new pastorate. Uh, it will be the new senior pastor at Vestavia Hills Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, it's the church that ordained me 30 years ago. It has a sense of going home. And so I just wanted to thank you all for welcoming me into the club, um, for helping me find my way in Gainesville, and just allowing me to serve beside each of you. And my tenure in Gainesville is not um, it's a lot shorter than I expected, that my church expected, than all of us. I just, um, but I'm recognizing that it has been a time of great meaning and deep relationships, and y'all have been a big part of that for me. And so I especially want to just highlight the work and ministry of my church, First Baptist Church of Gainesville, 
And one of my goals of being part of the club was helping you all stay connected to um, our church and for our church to stay connected to our community. And for I wanted you all to see just the incredible impact that our church has been around Gainesville for 152 years continues to make. And so this church and her ministries have long preceded me and will do that. Um, long after I'm gone. So I'm just grateful for their, their ministry in my life and your ministry and connection to us. So will you join me in prayer? Gracious Lord, today we thank you for the seasons of our lives. By the coming of spring, each season has its own purpose and meaning, joys and challenges. So today, may you give us gratitude for the present seasons of our lives. Help us to see that you have something for us in this season where we find ourselves, even when we cannot see it. I pray for the coming season of the Gainesville Rotary Club. As we distribute the funds from the Wild Game Supper, may you multiply exponentially the work of these nonprofits that we support in the community. And may these be seasons of growth and meaning in these organizations because of their connection to Rotary. Now guide us in the work that we have before us, wherever it may be and wherever you may lead. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Eric. At this time, we're going to introduce guests of uh, Rotarians or any visiting Rotarians. So if we have any guests and visitors, if you'd stand at this time. Um, I have a guest I would like to introduce. I have my guest is Stephanie Marchman uh, with the law firm of Gray Robinson. Good afternoon. I'm Greg Young. My guest today is Bree Gutterman uh, with Associates Management of Realty. Realty. And um, she's going, she's the president elect of Greater Gainesville Club. And some of you may know her father, Hawes Adams. Welcome. Okay. All right. All right. We're moving right along. We're going to go get into our announcements. And first we have Nancy Hart. Nancy, you come forward for your announcement. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Want to thank um, Scott Winsler and TJ Pache for putting together a fun and fellowship on Saturday. We went um, all around and visited a bunch of Habitat for Humanity homes under construction and also dropped a little coin at the Habitat Restore. I got, believe it or not, lead crystal glasses for $3 a stem. I couldn't believe it. Anyway, um, that's not what this announcement is about, just to thank them. <laughs> the most impactful moment for me um, on Saturday was when we went to the Women Build House. You may or may not know that Habitat has uh, a team of women builders who work um, a structure without the help of men, which I, I found that pretty interesting. And we have the opportunity to bring them lunch on April 9th because I thought to myself, I, I can't build, I can't hammer a nail or hurt someone, but I certainly can cook. And so I offered to bring lunch to the 18 or so volunteers that will be there on April 9th. These will include their usual building team plus engineering students from UF. So I wondered if anyone would wanna help me bring lunch for 18 women on April 9th. If you want to just let me know and we'll figure out a plan. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Nancy. Uh, Lisa, are you? Lisa can come forward and talk with us about do-goodery, I believe. So, um, hi, everybody. I hope you got the email about our do-goodery. Um, we met as a committee and we created the form that was presented and provided. Um, we're looking for you guys to reach out in the community to someone that you think would be a good fit to reach the tenants that we had. Um, I have the form right here. So we looked at making sure their rotary service for their um, item that they're whatever they'd like to do or submit for some do-goodery funds was in the service area of peace and conflict prevention, disease prevention and treatment, water and sanitation, material and child health, I'm sorry, maternal and child health, basic education and literacy, 
and economic and community development. So we're looking right now, um, they're going to be due um, April 8th, that's a Friday at 5 p.m. You go on to that Google link that you have, you go on to the form, you have either an agency that you've sent it to that you'd like to make a, um, you know, kind of present an application for something they'd like to put. We have over $10,000 in do goodery funds. We are looking for projects or items that are gonna be right up to 2000. We are considering that kind of the cap, um, but it is an opportunity to have some organizations that have things that they'd like to do. It gives us a chance for all the funds that you've put aside for your $25 for do-goodery to do something good in the community and for us to help different nonprofits in our community. Um, so if you have any questions, when you saw the form, it's gonna have my email. Lisa Rotary at gmail.com. So please reach out and I'll try my best to answer any of the questions that you have. We have had um, a few applications already in this system. And again, April 8th at 5 p.m. is gonna be our deadline. So if you know any non-for-profits that you think would be a good fit, please reach out, send them the form and um, our committee will be meeting shortly after to go through and, and give a recommendation to the board. So, thank you guys. All right, at this time, the program, um, I'm pleased to turn the program over to our president, David Gracie. Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians and guests. It is wonderful uh, to be back with you today after a, a week hiatus um, last week. Um, I'll, I'll tell you that uh, the, the first thing I wanna do is, is thank President-elect Greg Young for your willingness and your capability to do a great job running the meeting last week. I, I finally had, had time to, to watch the video on YouTube last night and watch the meeting and you just did a great job, Greg, and um, just confirming a lot of the feedback I got from fellow Rotarians, Melanie, et cetera, who said you just ran a great meeting, so thank you. Um, I'll, I'll tell you that it, it was it just, it was wonderful um, getting away um, it was my son's spring break, so Megan and Cecil and I took a trip to Utah and, and actually got to, you know, kind of try to disconnect. It's, we don't take a lot of these long breaks. We typically do our traveling and, and breaks on the long weekend, so this was kind of special for us and just, you know, getting out there and, and breathing some of that fresh mountain air and, and again, trying to, doing our best to disconnect, and I say our best because you know, business doesn't stop. My office doesn't close. The stock market doesn't close. Rotary doesn't stop. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, TJ and I, this is, um, this is kind of, this will illustrate my point. TJ and I were working on a grant, a district grant with, uh, with Jenny Van Hart, getting some guidance from Jenny on that. And, and boy, I really wanted to get that wrapped up before I left, but there, was, uh, there were a couple of um, documents that required my signature and President-elect Greg's signature. And, um, you know, I, I said, TJ, you, you got to help me with this. I'm, I'm on vacation. My, my wife is really wants me to disconnect and spend some time with, with her and Cecil. But, you know, we, we had, I had to get my, my wet John Hancock on this form, and, and I basically turned it over to TJ. I remember sending him a text, and we had a kind of a, a text shared laughter on this um, states away, but I, I said, TJ, you got to take this. My wife's about to frisbee my laptop, my laptop off the balcony, so th this, this was great what TJ did, and I'll just tell you a little bit about the grant. That's why I wanted to lead into this. Um, Catholic Charities is the organization we're partnering with here, and we're, they, they've, got, um, they've got some classes that they run in their, in their meeting room. One of them is, is for uh, kind of low-income folks, and it, it's a financial fitness class. These are folks that just, you know, don't know how to balance a checkbook, et cetera. So, you know, people like David and I will be helping with that when we get that set up. Another of these classes is for their ESOL clients. These are English as a second or other language. And this is just helping them have a better grasp of, of English, just kind of get around English understanding. So, you know, this new AV equipment and the upcoming installation that we're going to be doing is going to really make an impact. So 
TJ, thanks for initiating that grant and helping us follow through with it. Um, I, I want to mention um, an email I got uh, last night. And I'll, I'll just say that Dalton Birch is, is having a hard time. He's actually in North Florida Regional Medical Center. Um, had a fall and it's it, it's something that um, I, I'm comfortable sharing this because I know Dalton's okay with it. He's He is the kind of guy and I think he's in a situation where his prayers, our prayers for him and our visits to him are going to be meaningful. He's um, uh, He did some damage to his, his lower lumbar. I think he, he broke like five five vertebrae down there. So he's, it looks like surgery is imminent. So please keep him in your thoughts and prayers. He's up there at North Florida in room 606. If you're so inclined to go visit him, I know he and his daughter um, would appreciate that. I also uh, want to thank uh, Eric Spivey for his years of service to this club. I, I have a, a very clear memory of um, meeting Eric and, and getting to, to have, have coffee with Eric and, and talking to him about his rotary intentions and about my rotary intentions and lots of other stuff. But um, I, I'm, I'm privileged to, to know Eric as a friend and a fellow Rotarian. And, um, yeah, you know, I, I've, I've said this before up here that I, I think it's, it's such a, a beautiful expression of our club that we have so many reli religious leaders of, of different different religions, different uh, denominations of Christianity, et cetera. And, and, and we were granted the freedom to, to, to have these invocations and, and pray. And Eric, you've done such a beautiful job of that, meaningful invocations every time you do it. So thank you. And Eric, you, you have, um, you've certainly changed a lot of lives in your what, three years or so here. I know your, your stay was more brief than you intended, but we're glad we had you for the three years. And I've got this year's theme coin for you. You, you have certainly served to change lives. So thank you, Eric. Okay, folks, we have got a wonderful program and a, a wonderful speaker today. Um, Brett Buell is certainly a friend of mine. And so without um, standing up here any longer, I'm going to ask another friend of mine, Eric Godet, to come up and introduce Brett. Thank you, David. Okay. So wonderful Rotarians. Let me tell you a little bit about Brett Buell. Brett Buell is the development director of the Gainesville Opportunity Center. Now, the GOC is a mental health clubhouse following the international clubhouse model for psychosocial rehabilitation. The model follows recovery through work with, uh, this is a method that helps people living with chronic mental illness get back to the workforce and lead meaningful and fulfilling lives. Brett has served as the vice president and president of the Florida Clubhouse Coalition from 2015 to 2020. Since then, the revenue of the GOC received from the state has increased sevenfold, and four new clubhouses have started throughout the state. Brett grew up in Tampa, moved around for his first career in television news, and Brett has lived in Minneapolis, Fort Myers, Tallahassee, Las Vegas, and finally he reached the promised land of Gainesville. Please give a great rotary welcome for Brett Buell. All right, um, do we have PowerPoint? Awesome, awesome. Paving a path. Paving a path back into the community. About seven years ago when I joined the GOC, I also joined the Downtown Rotary Club. And uh, it's been great to get involved in so many worthwhile activities in the community and meet so many wonderful people. And my club has helped me and helped our organization tremendously. Um, but what is also really special is that as I look around this room, how many people in this room have helped the Gainesville Opportunity Center? 
uh, when I first joined, um, you know, nobody in town knew what the GOC was. And I know that there's still probably a lot of people in this room that don't. Hopefully at the end of today, you'll know a little bit more about us and uh, hopefully you'll want to come visit us. Um, the first person to visit the GOC from Rotary was actually John Bruner from this club who came down uh, to make sure that I knew how to um, organize and sell the Wild Game Feast tickets correctly. So, um, yeah. And uh, then people such as um, Craig Carter, his, his, um, his advice, you know, he's always picked up the phone when I've called and always helped us and opened some doors for us. And I really appreciate that. Uh, Eric was um, MC at our ribbon cutting when we bought our own building last year. I mean, it was, um, if you knew where we were um, 10 years ago, a little hole in the wall, um, the strides that we've made have just been tremendous. Uh, Helen Warren, even before she was in Rotary, did tremendous things for us, as did Amber Miller. Um, last year, a whole group of you guys from this club came and built our garden right after we built the building. So um, Greg Young was really involved in that, and TJ, and Lisa was involved in that. Um, Tony was there, and uh, many, many others. So I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys. Thank you all for all the good that you do for the community, and thank you for everything that you've done to help build up the GOC. So, oh, yeah. Let's see here, there we go. Got to turn it on, got to turn it on. Let's see, there we go. All right, so four clubhouses. Uh, mental health clubhouses help adults with chronic mental illness get back in the community and find jobs. We're a support service. We help them support um, with support, and we help them support each other. And, um, you know, I talked a little bit about the support that I've gotten from Rotary and just how great that's made me feel. And, the, and I know that it makes you guys feel good to support others. Well, that's what we're doing at the GOC. We're helping people support other people feel good about themselves, and that empowers them to move forward. The first clubhouse started in 1947 in New York City, and uh, there was people let out of mental hospitals. They had no place to go. They had no support. So they started a place, which they termed their clubhouse, um, which was their home base to find jobs. And pretty soon they started, um, they needed somebody to answer the phone when it rang in case somebody had a job. They needed somebody to make coffee. They needed somebody to clean up. They needed somebody to do all these things. They needed to be done. And that's how the clubhouse, clubhouse movement was born. Um, we use the term recovery through work. So most people in this room uh, have a job or they're retired or um, have had jobs in the past, obviously. And your job is such a core essence of who you are. And so many of the people that we're helping People with chronic mental illness haven't had a job, not for one year, two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, they haven't worked. Some people um, that we've placed in jobs, it's their first job ever. And that's a missing part of their life. It's a missing part of their identity. Um, at the clubhouse, we do meaningful work. So we, we get our members involved in our day-to-day -day operation. These things need to be done. There's not enough staff to do them without the members. We're counting on you to come in and help us with these tasks. And for the first time in all, in so many of our members' lives, they feel needed. Well, they need me there. If I don't come in, this isn't going to get done. And that is such an empowering feeling for people that have been in hospitals and jails and sleeping on their parents' house, um, couch and homeless. They don't feel needed. They feel like they're a burden. So at the GOC, they feel needed. And that genuine feeling of need is something that gives them the confidence and carries them forward in their lives. We don't teach classes there per se. We get the members involved in things that need to be done. They accomplish things. They see other people with mental illness accomplishing things. And that gives them um, the confidence to succeed. We're not creating busy work for them. 
So at the GOC, uh, we, we get members involved in all the jobs. Obviously, the cleaning is probably the most obvious uh, to people that during COVID, our members helped wipe down surfaces, um, cleaning things with Cintas, um, commercial grade cleaner like they use in restaurants. Um, members are learning self-care habits that they can take home. One of the most common characteristics um, or symptoms of anybody with mental illness is that they lose the ability to self-care. They stop taking care of themselves. And when you stop taking care of yourself, you don't shower, you don't get up in the morning, you might have a job, but you don't go to the job. You just lose all that stuff. And then your life starts deteriorating around you. And once that starts happening, there aren't a lot of paths back. It's pretty hard when you when you fall real low to go to go back. So I'm so honored again that the Rotary is getting involved in our kitchen. Uh, we have a home style kitchen. Uh, our building is a house that was converted into an office and we have a house kitchen in there. And so through Rotary and through the Wild Game Feast funds this year, we're gonna be building the Rotary kitchen at the Gainesville Opportunity Center. And I couldn't be more proud and excited um, for that. The members, come in and they help us make lunch every day. And we go, we get fresh meat from the food bank and we prepare everything from fresh. So members are learning self-care. They're learning um, restaurant practices. You know, we wear gloves, we wash our hands. We do all this stuff for food prep and um, the members are, are learning to do things. So. In our office unit, uh, members work at the reception desk. They um, they help with important data entry. Um, we're funded mostly by the Department of Children and Families, and we have to report certain things to the state, of course. And so the members are involved in the data input and the data entry of that. Um, uh, the young African-American gentleman there in the lower corner, um, he's signing a thank you card. Um, to somebody that donated to us. And so that's something that our members also get involved in things like that, that they're, they're signing the thank you cards um, and they're writing the thank you cards and they're appreciative and they're part, they're part of us. They're part of us. Clubhouses were founded with the belief that people with mental illness can lead meaningful lives. We believe in if you come to the GOC, you'll see that people do want to do things for themselves, but sometimes there's barriers in the way. Sometimes they've failed, they've fallen, they've, they feel like I can't try anymore. They need some help, they need some support, they need some encouragement. Those are the things that we do. Um, the jobs, both the jobs, the tasks at the GOC and the jobs that we support them in help create a purpose in life. Um, and again, the feeling of being genuinely needed, um, that I can look a member in the eye and say, I need you, I need you to help me. This won't get done without you. Um, it's just so powerful. So um, recently, just to show some of the evidence base in our practice that the American Psychiatric Association awarded our parent agency, we're completely independent, but our model Clubhouse International with the presidential award um, this past year. Um, I mentioned that we're funded mostly by the Department of Children and Families, and part of the uh, part of our funding is increase is that they know that they need to fund recovery. That crisis is obviously very important, crisis care. But if you don't give people a path back into the community, they're going to go back into crisis, and the the crisis care costs a lot more. Um, clubhouses have been a priority in the, in the governor's budget for the past five years for additional funding. So, um, I mentioned again, clubhouses are recognized as recovery oriented, oriented members help and support each other. And, um, we help break isolation and we help people rejoin the community. Um, are you guys familiar with the term Baker Act? 
Baker Act, that's when the police take you away. Um, you're having some sort of mental illness episode and you're either a threat to yourself or others. So a Baker Act for three days, three days in a hospital, it's about $10,000, including the police, including an ambulance, including the hospital stay. And then what happens after, what happens after three days? They let them out, right? And they go right back to where they were. It might've saved their life, but is that really a path back? Um, I certainly think crisis obviously needs to be funded, but we need, we need a, a, another way. Jail or prison costs about $40,000 a year. Currently, about 50%, and I think it's 55% of the inmates are receiving psychiatric medications while they're in jail. Um, back when I was in TV, when I was with TV20, um, I think the number was closer to 35%. And I think the reason for the increase isn't a change in the population. It's more of a change of the awareness. It's good they're getting some care in jail, but you know, jail isn't where you should be going for your health care. Um, you don't come out of a hospital feeling, oh, I'm super confident now. You don't come out of jail going, I feel super confident now. You know, you, the, the, the stays in hospitals and jails are obviously something that breaks their daily routine. If they had a job going into jail or going into uh, hospitalization can make them lose that job. And now they've burned a bridge and now they can't go back. And now there's another barrier for people to get back. So we did a survey of the 14 clubhouses in Florida. And um, in the past year, this number, the numbers, unfortunately, are a little bit down. We think they went up a little due to COVID. Um, but of our population, which is chronic mental illness, 72% didn't need crisis stabilization. 83% didn't go to the emergency room for psychiatric issues. 86% had no interactions with law enforcement. So I would say that not having to go to a mental hospital means your life's getting a little bit better and that the clubhouse is participating and helping you make your life better. So what the clubhouse, what the GOC is doing is we're making lives better and we're saving the community money because ultimately who's paying for all this cost? The, the community, the taxpayer, they're paying for the jails, for all these people that are at poverty level that are going into the hospitals over and over and over and over again. We're paying for it. So it's in all of our interest for, for many reasons to create a path back for people. That way. Go to the next. So, what are the paths back? Um, at the GOC, we're trying to create jobs for people. So we will go out and try to get relationships with employers. And then we will work with the employer to educate them about what is mental illness? Um, what do you need to be um, afraid of, which is nothing? Um, but what do you need to worry about? Or what do you need to be concerned about? How can we, um, how can we help you guys with that. So we go out in the community and we found several employment partnerships. Uh, one of our employment partnerships is with Culver's and um, Culver's is owned by a Rotarian in my club. Her name's Megan Olson. And uh, she created a special job just for the GOC. And so we get to fill that job. And this is a clubhouse thing. And so what happens is myself or another GOC staff has a Culver's uniform. We go down train them on that job, work with them on that job because they're comfortable with us until they're ready to be on their own. And then they work that job on their own for six to nine months. 
And then from there, we move them into a more permanent job and move somebody more vulnerable into the culvert's job. This has um, shown some tremendous success. The people that were working down there, I've, I mentioned them to you. The person who's in that position now, uh, she hadn't worked since 1995. Um, the other person that's working that job is a college graduate, and he hasn't worked since college. Um, he's been living at home with his father. His father's getting older now and is unable to care for him. This person is now living on his own for the first time in his life, and he's working for the first time in, in over 20 years. Uh, we have a couple other young gentlemen who are in their mid to late 20s who have never had a paying job. And they're now successfully working with the support of the Gainesville Opportunity Center. We hope that we can um, grow that partnership. We are looking for more employers like that. We have a, a similar relationship with Alachua County. And um, thanks to Eric, uh, we're going to be speaking to the CEO of North Florida Hospital in just a couple of weeks about partnerships. So um, again, more great things that Rotarians are doing for the GOC. So I mentioned that um, Rotary helped build our garden. Oh, let's see, is that working now? Stop on, keep going. Yep, so that's our partnership with Culver's. That's Rotarian Megan Olson. Um, Jovan and Keon, both of them had never worked before. And then we can go to the next slide. So I mentioned last year, Rotary came out and helped build our garden. So you might recognize a few people in there on the lower corner. Um, there's Greg, there's a group shot with several people. I know Lisa was there. Um, I don't know the name of everybody that was there. There's Tony Barr. I think he broke his chainsaw uh, trying to help us, but uh, we really appreciate the help. And so growing the garden is another thing that the members do at the GOC. It's a job that needs to be done. We harvest and eat the food and uh, it's meaningful work. So let's see, next slide. Um, GOC has helped Rotary. We have, um, our Rotary clubs adopted this road out here and the GOC has been involved in that. We helped stuff um, dictionaries for the dic Rotary Dictionary Project recently and we ring the bell every year. Am I doing okay? Okay, okay. My watch is a little fast. Okay, go ahead. So kitchen needs. Um, again, the wild game feast funds are going to be used to redo our kitchen. So you can see our kitchen, it, it looks like a house and um, we're gonna get all restaurant grade equipment in our kitchen, thanks to you guys. And we greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, we're making lunch for 20 to 30 people a day and we have the capacity to help more. Um, we want to be seeing 60 people a day instead of 20 or 30. Um, we want to be placing more people in jobs. With our funding increases, we can do that. Um, due to COVID, we've lost some of our referral sources just because nobody's meeting in person. Nobody's getting together in person. Meridian used to bring people over on a routine basis, but you don't want to get in a car with somebody you don't know. Um, our other referral sources, um, aren't bringing as many people for the same reason because people just aren't getting together. We hope that stops. Um, we can change that in the next year. So the Rotary Kitchen at the GOC, um, thank you, Michael Pellet, for drawing up the plans for this. Um, when I came and spoke to this group the last time before the feast, um, afterwards, I didn't ask Michael Pellet, he came up and he volunteered. Uh, to draw our plans. And um, that's the kind of people that are in this room. And uh, Mike Conroy and Dalton Baker uh, have been over as uh, project managers, helping us figure out what we need. We're amateurs, we don't know what we need. And, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, we found out that it's going to cost a little more than what we anticipated. But we told Rotary that when we um, did this project that we would have the funding or find the funding to make it all work. So, um, the Rotary Kitchen will be under construction very, very short. So, go ahead. Um, the Game Feast, wow, what an experience. It was just a lot of fun. This was something that we got our board involved, we got our members involved. We were out there every Saturday 
um, working with you guys. You guys were getting to know us. We were getting to know you guys, um, seeing our members in action, seeing that our members are capable, um, enjoying the spring air and the members feeling like, Hey, I'm part of something. I'm part of something. And there's just, um, you know, money can't buy that money. Can't buy that. That is just community that is built in rooms like this. So what a wonderful time. Um, so we will certainly have a plaque in the rotary kitchen, recognizing for you, recognizing you guys for your generous support. Um, if you follow our Facebook page, and I, I would encourage you guys to uh, log on, Google or search for the Gainesville Opportunity Center and like our Facebook page, because we get involved. We have so much rotary stuff on, on there. Um, and just the daily activities, people that follow us go, you know what, Brett, I am so uplifted every day when I see the work and when I see what your members are accomplishing, um, it just, it's inspiring. And so I'd, I'd like for you guys to, to get involved with us. So uh, in summary, people want to live meaningful and fulfilling lives and with the right support they can. The GOC is making people's lives better. We're building a better community together, together with Rotary. And we hope that Rotary will continue to be part of our future uh, in our community. So um, thank you, and I'll open it up to any questions. Members, could you go one more slide? Um, that's our website and our um, two events coming up. So if you want to see our kitchen before it's constructed, we're giving tours this Saturday during our car wash. Come by, get your car washed and uh, join the tour. And also we're having a bike day. We're going to be biking four miles from the Cade Museum to Bulware Springs on May 1st. And if you're interested in getting involved in that, we'd love to have you. So um, any questions? Any questions? Yes, over here behind Michael. Yes, thank you for this informative presentation. And I was very happy to be able to work along beside you in preparation for the Wild Game Feast. Can you give us an idea of the time frame that people spend in the center at the clubhouse before they are ready to launch? I understand it's probably uh, uh, quite variable, but can you give us a range? Sure. And like you said, it is quite variable. There, there are some people that we help them just polish up their resume, help them with some interview skills. They get a job and we don't have much more interaction with them than that. There's other people that um, take a lot more work. Um, we had a, a gentleman who was, who was at a Grace Marketplace. He, he lived in another county. And so somebody just brought him to Gainesville and dropped him at Grace. And so um, he was able to get into some of the Meridian housing programs. And once he got his medication straightened out and got his housing straightened out, because it's pretty hard to have a job if you can't take a shower or buy yourself a pair of pants. Um, he started coming to the GOC and he came to the GOC. Um, I know this number because we used it in a grant. He came to the GOC 70 times before we were able to place him into a job at Culver's. And, um, and that was over about a year and a half period. Um, there's other people's it's taken three years, five years. Um, it's, it is a very wide range. And so what our job is, is not to judge is to meet them where they're at. And if they're not ready to go back to work, it's not time to force them to go back to work, but help them, help them when they're ready to take the steps that they want to take. Hi, Wilbur Holloway. Uh, we have several bikers in, Ro in Rotary, uh, Jason and Ryan. I think four miles would be a challenge for them, but we can start working on it now. <laughs> sure. Well, come on. That was, come on out. That was cute. Thank you for the presentation. Jacob, Tim, you are doing a wonderful job. I think that model 
it's not only for your program, but I think we need it locally and international. So I had a question with, uh, <clears throat> I got this opportunity coming Friday, actually, because you talk about mental health, it's a big problem, particularly in prison. And I will be teaching people with disabilities. It's the same thing you're doing, except you mention people in particular with disabilities in prison, they have difficulty simulated back to the community. Right. So this is a pilot. I'm the first in instructor. I, I will let you know after two months. But basically, I will be in three prison, uh, two men and one <clears throat> woman prison. And the idea is to teach them soft skill to come out. So my question is, mm -hmm. in this scenario, you are, in my mind, a perfect model we're looking into this, uh, working closely with not only Alachua County on those who have disabilities coming out of prison, and most likely, if we're not careful, may go back, if they go back to the old ways. But how could you connect like this population to be placed like GOC and other models that help the community? Do you work with people like that? By working with people like you? Seriously, and, and I mean that, that we're looking to form more partnerships because we now have the capacity to um, to see more people and we want to grow the, um, the scope of what we're doing. You know, we, we want to do this on a bigger scale. We want to have housing one day. We want to support people that couldn't live on their own, living on their own. We want to help people get back into the community and find jobs. And we don't have a pipeline out of out of the Alachua County Jail or the prison system right now. And I'd love to have a pipeline coming out of there. So I'd, I'd love uh, to work with even yet another Rotarian on doing something really important for this community. So um, thank you. Brett, thank you. Uh, what a wonderful presentation. I'm glad uh, Tom was able to, to pivot and dance a little bit and get, get the PowerPoint going. We've, uh, candidly, that, that's been something that we've, we've wrestled with a um, couple of different spots, but uh, I think we've just about got it nailed down now that I've got about three months left. Uh, but uh, Brett, really, uh, you, you, you guys, um, I think one reason that um, the, the Rotary Club of Foundation Board, which you're, you're aware that's a, a distinct entity than Rotary Club of Gaines. Well, but I think one reason we were, we were kind of drawn to, to GOC is that, that you really do serve um, a, a unique space, a, a very underserved and, and for lack of a better term, a, a needy population in, in our, our area. I mean, th these are folks that you know, literally, you guys are lifting them up off the ground. These are people that are are disconnected with family, friends. They have nowhere to go, nothing to do, and you know that you talk about being, I guess, Baker acted for three days. The other thing that happens is you probably lose your job. So this is, I mean, you, you guys just you, you do so much for our community. And um, uh, Brett, I, I want to mention this before everyone that. Um, well, one one way that I got to know you is is seeing you out at Hatchet Creek. I think you were there every Saturday on the work days, and and um, I, I know I, I enjoyed meeting um, uh, some of your your members as, as you refer to them. Um, Jay Nordquist and I talked about this. We we um, we we got to talk to one gentleman for a few minutes, and and you could just tell this was a a good person, but just you know was just kind of trying to get things back together and it, you just you guys do something special for us. And I, I've got um, to commemorate your talk and, and to just kind of uh, show our appreciation for you. This is our, our rotary coin. As a fellow Rotarian, uh, you're, you know this stuff. Uh, one side has service above self. The other side has our four-way test and, and we enjoy hearing that every meeting. So I wanna, you, you can step up here and say it with me if you'd like. I'm, but it says, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concern? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concern? Thank you, Brett, for everything you do for us.
Okay. Great, great to be back, guys. Great to be with everyone. We have our, um, our drawing for the 5050 Rotary Reading Safari. 871 are the last three digits. 871. 